hi there. In statistics, we want to make statements based on certain data. Usually the data are collected in a dataset and stored in a spreadsheet on the computer. Before doing possibly complicated things with the data, it is wise to inspect the data. In the previous video, you have seen various methods to do this graphically. The histogram, the kernel estimate and the empirical distribution function. In this pre-lecture, you will learn about commonly used numerical summaries of the data, like the mean, the median, the sample variance and others. We focus on one-dimensional or univariate data. In the graphs given here, the vi we visualize a set of 10 values. You can also give a numerical indication of the location of the bulk of the data, as well as an indication of the spread of the individual points around the center. Various choices can be made for the center and spread measures, as we will see. The most commonly used method to describe the center of a dataset is the mean or average of the numbers. For the dataset given here, the mean is minus 5.05. This mean value has an interpretation in terms of balance. If you think of the points on the line as little equal masses, the mean of the data can be seen as the location on the line where the line should be supported to achieve balance. If you wish to denote a dataset in general, so without specifying the points with numbers, you write it as x1, x2, up till xn. Here n is the number of values, usually called the sample size. Then the formula for the mean is given using the summation symbol sigma. The mean is notorious for its sensitivity to only a few bad data points. For instance, if one point is wrongly recorded, say much too high, then the mean value of the data will also move to the right with that one point. The median is an alternative measure of location of a dataset. It is a value that is characterized by the statement that 50% of the data points are to the left of this point and 50% of the points to the right. To find the median, you first write the data in ascending order. If the number of points in the dataset is odd and all data points are distinct, the median is uniquely defined as the middle observation. If there is an even number of points in the dataset, as here, you choose the average of the two middle points as median, as is done here. So the median of our dataset is equal to minus 4.7. Just for fun, look what happens to the median if one of the data points moves to the right. The median can change, but at some point, moving the point further to the right has no effect on the median. Terminology for this property of the median is that it is a robust measure of location. You can think of more measures of center or location. A property all these measures should have, though, is that if you add a constant c to all individual data points, its location summary should do the same. Giving it a little thought, you will see that the mean and median of a dataset have this property. Statisticians are also interested in the variability of the data around the center. In terms of the histogram of the data given here, the spread is related to the width of the bell shape. The spread in this dataset is less than the spread in the dataset visualized here. And this third dataset has even smaller variability. The most commonly used measure of spread is the standard deviation. It is constructed in a couple of steps. Consider an example with four data points visualized here. First, compute the mean of the data. Then, for each individual data point, compute the difference with the mean yielding, in our example, four differences. Then square these differences. In this way, you obtain four non-negative numbers. It is intuitively clear that high variation in the data will yield, on average, high value of these square differences. And then sum and scale these squares. The so-called sample variance is defined by this formula and computed by this procedure. Finally, the standard deviation is the square root of the sample variance. 
Another method to quantify the spread in a data set is by means of the median absolute deviation, commonly abbreviated to MAD. This MAD can be computed in four steps. First, compute the median of the data. As we have an example with four points here, the median is the average of the second and third observation, ordered in magnitude. Then compute for every individual data point the difference with this median and the absolute values of these differences. These are four non-negative numbers. Large values of these numbers indicate that here the data are highly variable. Finally, compute the median of these values. Actually, the definition of the MAD may look a bit more natural than the definition of the standard deviation with this scaling, but the standard deviation is in practice the most often used measure of spread. The last measure of scale is related to the so-called quartiles of a data set. Just like the median divides the data set in two equally large chunks of data, half to the left of the median and half to the right of the median, quartiles divide the data into four such parts. To the left of the lower quartile, there is 25% of the data, and to the right of the upper quartile, there is also 25% of the data. For obvious reasons, one could call the median the second quartile. Just as with the median in case of a data set of even size, one has to make precise what the exact value of the quartiles is in case the data set cannot be divided in four distinct parts easily. We will not go into that here. There is a natural connection of the quartiles with the empirical distribution function. This picture shows the empirical distribution function of 59 measured melting points of a natural B wax. Add a horizontal line at height 0.25 to this plot and check where it hits the empirical distribution function. The x coordinate of this point is the lower quartile. In this case, 63.36. Similarly, you can determine the upper quartile, and for this data set, its value is 63.84. Based on these quartiles, you can define a third measure of variation of the data, the interquartile range. This is the difference between the third and the first quartile. As you see, for the melting temperatures of natural B wax, the interquartile range is equal to 0.48. You now know two numerical measures of location, the mean and the median. Also, you learned about three measures of scale, the standard deviation, the MAD, and the interquartile range. It's good to practice with these concepts before you come to class. See you there.